Welcome to Three on the Ones and Twos with your hosts, Tom, Cassie, and James. Just three old friends talking about their favorite records. Think of it as the coolest book club for music nerds. This is so cool. We want to give a shout out to Ava and everyone and Murphy and everyone at the Bookhouse Pub. Thank you what for keeping brilliant, us cool. What a beautiful Sunday afternoon in, in Atlanta. The shade. It's hot outside, but cool. Rock and roll cool in here. Uh, it's very hot outside, but Palms Fest is going on. Shout out to Eric and everyone at Southern Star Tattoo and the artists and the vendors and the musicians. And the um, coolest thing about the show is we talk with our best friends. What's up, Kevin? Hey, what's, what's happening, Tom? Um, yeah, so yeah, James, Joyce, and Chess, shout out to Cassie. We love you and miss you and hope you feel yeah, all right. Yeah, miss Cassie not being here. Was yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, Cassie, you put this together, actually. Come Kevin, on. Kevin, yeah. Kevin Come on, Cassie. And you, and you put this together. Um, <laughs> Anyways, that means I get to do a second one. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, we're going to get into uh, this record. Uh, Kevin Phillips is uh, one of my dear, dear brothers and great friends. And uh, what I love about this life is uh, we just get closer. It's really cool. True. So I'm gonna, I, true. I appreciate yeah. that, man. And uh, so... We've been talking to you a while about joining and doing this. Uh, when you brought up this record, which we're going to name in a minute, I said, well, hands down, even if I'm not there, that's fine, because I've been traveling, but James must be there. And you were like, James yes. must be there. For you sure. Agreed. This is his Agreed wheelhouse. Instantly. This is his wheelhouse. This, this is, is in his, my wheelhouse, yeah. but that's a, every, a lot of, there's a, fanatical fan base totally. for this, yes, so yeah. it's in a lot of people's wheelhouse, yeah. I think. Um, you know, and so instrumental, funny you using that word, band, pun, right. uh, but, and influential. So, yes. what's the record, Kevin? Influential, Phillips? and something that has a fanatical fan base, but also can be categorized as um, challenging, mm -hmm. um, takes patience sometimes, but also very catchy, and... Um, Abrasively melodic and avant-garde and avant-garde, um, yeah. And um, dare we say? Okay, so wait. It's what, a little bit of something for everybody. <laughs> what right, record are you right. talking about? All right. Well, it's <laughs> the fall, live at the Witch Trials, starting right. from the beginning. Which well, we've got 50 more albums to go. And right. importantly, <laughs> we have the very first album, not a live album, a studio al album named Live at the Witch Trials. Right. That's a good thing to say because. Um, and this probably was recorded in 78, since it came out in 79, I'm guessing. Uh, um, or at some point. Uh, but The Fall has done that. I mean, I, the Seminal Live, I think, that album is also live. not live? Or is I it don't live? know. Parts of it. Parts they, of it. I think parts of it are live. They're, they're so... I mean, they, that's that's just. I only, I only started fall up for this fall say, album, there, James. Yeah. Out of like uh, you know, oh, dozens okay. and dozens. Well, the thing is, is when you talk about that fan base, okay, so. The, and then using the word challenging, you're absolutely right, because it's not, it's a bit abrasive, or it's not like, you know, like, for for those listeners and viewers who like, oh, my stuff, first course, first course, like, for instance, we were just chatting with our friend Blake about yep. the replacements, great band, but you know where they're going with the first course, first course. Yeah. This, you're not going to know, like, where they're going, you know? Yeah, and, it's possible. And so you're willing to go for that ride and be challenged, and certain times be put off, and then later on comes around the fourth time and you like it yeah this record and there's been several reissues as well as just trying to see how many tracks or which one this one was but yeah. it ends up being a really good catch-all for the band which have been together for two years at this point recorded in December 78 and okay released, so, yeah. re released in 79 um, and so different reissues added the singles or took away songs or added songs so the yeah various editions of it um, so it is not only uh, a somewhat of an avant album to listen to, it ended up having, you know, uh, more than 20 tracks at some point. Yeah, on what, it. What it, what it, it's a kind of a catch all for that time period. Right, right. And I have like Palace of Swords Reversed, where it has some of those singles. And, right. and, and yeah, the, the US, I've had the, a chance to get the US version a few times. Right. I, I saw it in Boston. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very like, I like to find things in the wild. Like I like to go through record yeah. stores mm -hmm. and pick out and be like, yeah, and oh, I found no, one in. Oh, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. I, I came across it in Florida. I came across it in Boston for the the U.S. red cover one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it doesn't have uh, industrial estate. It doesn't have industrial one, estate on it. Yeah. This one does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was like. Talk myself out of not buying you. I'm like, well, it doesn't have industrial estate on it, but it's like, right. really good. I just, really good I, just, I just saw this thing the just other day that uh, Jesse Mallon uh, had posted, and he's and it was just 
it's just a picture of like an 80s girl with an 80s haircut looking through records and it said it's a shame that some people will never understand the feeling of discovering something in a really cool record store sure like it's just a magical like or, like arm hairs like oh my goodness look what i like, like you've texted bah! me we both yeah. travel a good bit and you're, you're texting me like look what i just discovered in, of Boliv course. in bolivia of course, like, yeah. like what the heck <laughs> you know uh, to James's point as well, it's one that I would stop and pick up and look at any time that I came across this record in, yeah. in a bin somewhere, you know, figure out, because there's a few different issues, but just also to admire it. Well, yeah. James is going to ask you a question right now about how old are we, what's the question? How old are you and where were you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so what is, what is your introduction to the fall? Yeah. Is, my introduction went way back to my high school days, for wow. sure. Wow. Yeah. Uh, a young punk. Um, you know, I don't even know. Cocoa Beach? Uh, in uh, uh, east coast of Florida, Cocoa Beach area, mm -hmm. uh, Cape Canaveral. And I'm, I'm trying to remember really or, or say it the right way. I guess I was a young punk uh, who didn't even know of the idea of post punk or if there even right. was a category, categorization of post punk, right? Right. Because it was. It's not the Ramones or the Sex Pistols or. But they the are. Clash. Yeah, and I'm talking like yeah. uh, 1989 ish. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but still, this is very early. And um, uh, groundbreaking for and in, post and in, punk. And in Florida, oh, finding course. that is, right. is kind of weird, right? Yeah, and so the story was it was one of my friends, Jim Davidson. Shout out Jim Davidson. If he ends up watching this, um, uh, wanted to take us to Orlando. We had to travel from uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida to Orlando, usually. Um, escaping um, detection from our parents. You know, yeah, so a couple, out, couple hours? Uh, about away. an hour, hour and a half yeah, drive out there. Drive, you have you to know, of course, being wild teenagers. Um, and, uh, and Do you listen, sneak out of the house and go to shows there? Is that sneak the out of the house to go to shows. There was yeah. a club called Visage, uh, RIP Visage from way back in the day. I love it. Um, shout out to Visage. Um, it it was, um, <laughs> you know, being wild teenagers all the way up there, hour, hour and a half trip. Only to get to Visage and find out that the fall had canceled. They, oh, by the way, they, they, short, they did a good bit of canceling. <laughs> they yeah, did do a good bit of canceling. Yeah. I have more stories yeah. about that. Yeah. But, but they played everywhere. Uh, yeah. They played Orlando. Yeah. Ball were never never afraid to yeah. play anywhere. Going to. But so just to cap off the story, that was my first um, really full on experience listening to the fall the whole way there. And then angrily and I guess also excitedly the whole way back. Yeah. You know. Um, Right. Really driving dangerously all the way back home and uh, yeah, making, I think making a full night out of it regardless. So I was. We all have stories about yeah. just to say that that trend of going to oh. a show oh, yeah. and not getting in or something happening Try. and the coming back, the disappoint that feeling. I I, I know exactly what you're right, but then about. somehow learning it doesn't matter. This band still you still remember you, it. You, know. you still you don't hold it against the band, but you kind of no. like I I was. Yeah, I never got to see Bim Scala Bim because they played at the Masquerade down here and it was uh, 18 and over and we're like 16-ish, yeah, so maybe yeah. 17, and they wouldn't let us in and we oh. never got to see them. And, and With Masquerade, you had to try though. You had to try. Well, I've also been there when it's 18 and nobody shows up and mm -hmm. eventually they're like, just come in, right. just don't, just be yeah. cool, don't try yeah. to drink. Just go in and we're, we're going to take put your five bucks. My, put an X on my hand, I'm cool. But, oh, but, or a band canceling. At yeah. the last minute, I think it's mm -hmm. there is a kind of a, everybody has that mem uh, that oh, sim I've, similar I've memory. Seen, of, yeah, I've been to the shows. Just being like yeah. so empty-handed. That was really, so my friend convincing me to go to the show, and then us li uh, listening all the way, and then drunken um, disappointment, excitement, shouting all the lyrics all the way back home. Wow, yeah. you have a special connection. That yeah, is yeah. So what is yours though? I wanted to hear what what yours was then. Well, I was I was in college at that point. And I was into post-punk bands from uh, Scotland mm -hmm. a lot, and a lot of them were, and I knew who like the Fall were or whatever. Right. Like I knew them as a name, but I didn't mm -hmm. own any of their albums. Um, but then these these bands from Scotland and, and North England, like Newcastle, uh, were really into the Fall, and they were making records that kind of sounded like the Fall. Right, they were influenced straight up. They said straight that up was influenced, their and, and on their on their like lyric, you know, they would cover, referencing. They'd cover Fiery Jack, right. or they right. do, you know. Um, That's interesting. These are bands like the Ummy Fur was a big. I was yeah. really into uh, Male Nurse, who was later also Country Teasers. Yeah. Like, so it's almost high five for the Male Nurse. Yeah, Male nice Nurse. Reference. Thank big, you. So the Slamp label, I was. Mm friends with the, the girl who did that, that label mm -hmm. and guided missile 
records. Anyway, those also, guys were also all out of that scene. Uh, Billy Childish and the Black Hands. Yeah, totally. Fiery so, Jack, right? Yeah, yeah. And and so the fall. So many other to them were that, like yeah. the blueprint of what they were doing. And I was like, well, I need to, I need to really deep dive into this band. And I ended up at Lux Tree in Athens, and they had a copy of Nordwest Goss on vinyl, which is a collection of songs from Perverted by Language and Our Nation Saving Grace. Mm -hmm. so it's like a, but two, also two great fall albums. It's still the greatest hits of those two right, albums of the Bricks yeah. era. I love. But then at the same time, all the albums were starting to be reissued on CD. So like at Tower Records, I could go there yeah. and get all the this reissues. This is like mid nineties. One of the times of yeah, Perverted yeah. by Language, or you know. And also, the that. fall continuing to carry on with Marky Smith, uh, frontman, as the um, usually uh, sole original member. Oh, only, um, yeah. You know, replacing the sure. band over and over. But, you know, at that time, when you started to discover, there was probably another new fall album came out eventually within the And another new. Yeah. So, actually, Bob, we were talking backstage. James the I 27 know. Points, yeah. that live album, was, mm -hmm. the, was the new album at okay. the time I started listening mm -hmm. to them. And okay. that was at Luxury all the time. There's and so I, many, I'm not even quite familiar with that one. It looks like it has, like, it's white, and it says the 27 points, and it's all live songs uh -huh. just yeah. recorded in various places. Uh -huh. One of their okay. yeah, I mean, weird for, live for me. But it has a tape with, like, with like tape uh, sort of strewn mm. about okay. in it, and it's just like a photograph. Yeah. Anyway, I always saw that record, and I was like, this this looks, their albums always look so cool. Uh, they look cool, yeah. It's art. It's the, every, everything about it is art. And, you're, and yeah. I always, people say, like, what album should I get into? If I'm going to get into the fall, what album should I get into? I say, like, just look for an al look look for any albums with the most, like, fucked up, thrown together artwork. Yeah, yeah. And those are the best ones, usually. Yeah. I mean, I, ones I, 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 like I know. Not a know. bad criteria. Like, like, yeah. Hex Induction Hour, Room to Live. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, they, I, they're, the more messed up they look, the, probably the cooler you I was, get. I, was, I like that idea. I was, I was saying, uh, backstage, backstage, we were chatting uh, offline, uh, before Kevin got here, it's like, um, for me, I was lucky enough that somehow they made it onto every mixtape or mix CD yeah. or playlist. A friend of mine that I thought had impeccable taste, by the way, I'm sitting with two guys who I think have impeccable taste in music, you know, and they, and they always, there'd be one or two fall songs on it. And so it'd be like, between a punk songs, a crowd rock song, or like an old reggae song, and then there'd be a couple of fall songs. And somehow it's the best mixtape ever. Like, uh -huh. You know, I mean, of it just it all, good. it all go, flows into each other, you know. And uh, like I was saying, talking about Mr. Pharmacist, you know, yeah. like which is actual cover, and like the, and they did really interesting covers, like the, mm -hmm. what they did to covers. Covers they, were always they great. They deconstructed them, you know, and it was just done right, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, taking a kind of straight song like Victoria yeah. by the Kinks, and then just chopping it up with repetition. Uh, make it sounding uh, you know, ten times more manic than the Kinks could have ever right. tried to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that challenge part you're talking about. But the other thing right. is, is but, this. but the thing is, is their their covers almost become more well known. Sure. Like that you. You My think favorite about, version, for sure. Yeah, you think about they 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 sort of take over oh, the song. Yeah. I love the song. I, for sure. I, I, I love. And, and, and some of their so, their covers, other than Victoria, most of their and our covers are really obscure. So yeah. you're, mm -hmm. it's I mean, fun to discover the old yeah. version of Mr. Farmer's, but the right. fall version just destroys yeah. it. Well, I was going to say I or love Fold in Money or any of those. I love Devo's yeah, version. I love Devo's version of Can't Get Get Your Satisfaction way more than the Stones. Right. Version. Sure. Like, you yeah. know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. They made it so, in the, so. So here's another question that I was bringing up, uh, uh, and the funny thing is, is, we talk about some of the stuff we talk about. Like this morning, I was like, "Stop talking! Like you got to save yeah. this for the show." But this could be a show. The stuff you're talking about backstage about the stuff. So here's my question, and uh, it's a, it's it's this it's humor, but it's also this truth to it. Like next to maybe guided by voices, like. Who, what band has had like the most members? Like this band's probably had 60 or 70 members, right? Over the years. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot because it really did change at a, a, a pretty high rate. Well, I mean, his, his, Kurt Wells, shout out to Kurt Wells, my brother. Um, mm -hmm. Kurt, Kurt Wells did it, told me, he's the one who told me the first time that famous Marky Smith quote. He goes, he goes, it could be me, just me singing and my mom playing bongos. It's still a fall record. Right. Like, exactly. that's, the best, that's, like, that's the best quote ever. You know. And it still sounds like yeah. a fall. Because it is delivering it, a it cadence. Is, it is yeah. kind of amazing how they can make so many different albums of so many different sounds so different, but yet it's still, in essence, you know it's a fall record. Like, yeah. you could listen to, you could 
they could put on a song from an album you've ever heard before, and you're like, right. that's the fall. Immediately. Yeah. 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 Immediately. No other band can central. do that. Well, clearly there's a high IQ uh, of intellect there. Uh, a guy who likes messing with interviewers, yeah. uh, a smart guy who, who's a wise ass to people, which I know you have some stories. <laughs> a about witty contrarian, yeah, a for witty, sure. cr yes, and um, and an angry guy who, who's like, no, I'm not going to give you this right now because you need it. I'll give it to you when I want to give it to you, like when we talk. That's very about, you, know, yeah. you know, and um, but you appreciate it so much. Uh, the only thing for me is is. Because I went and listened to this just the other day uh, while I was working. Live uh, at the Witch Trials. Yes, because I knew we'd be talking about it. And I love, and by the way, that's my, James and I talk about this. One of my favorite things about the show is a guest comes on and they remind me why I liked a record. So thank you, Kevin. Cheers. You know, yeah, cheers. Really you know, it's so much fun. But it's hard to say. They're being hard for me to say which my favorite song on an album is because mm -hmm. it's like the whole thing is just mm -hmm. this art piece. Well, to get back to Live of the Witch Trials, it comes with, like, um, I mean, what's the first track on the album? I'll make my point, but, um, yeah, so it comes out with Frightened, which yeah. is just, like, anxiety-ridden, right. jagged, um, scratchy, and uh, jangly, but aggressive guitars, somehow melodic at the same time with this uh, ding-dong, 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 just simple yeah. keyboard thing, um, but immediately captivating, right? I was thinking of Frightened as being almost their most normal early song. Like it's sort of like it's a, a good one to start the album. It's a good it? yeah, it's a good one to introduce you to the band. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's it's it, it hasn't sunken in yet because I always feel like this album, it's still very much a band. Like Marky e. Smith hasn't right. become this like this sort of like cult leader. You know, he, he I'm using became, the wrong term, but no, no, but you, at some point it fanatics. becomes the Marky e. Smith show. Right. So about with fanatics a band behind him. A band, at yeah. this, in this early stage, I feel like for this first albums, they're very much like a band of kind of feels more equal. As if they're producing it together. As they're producing it together. And obviously Marky e. Smith's a great singer and front man and, and, and sort of messiah or whatever, yeah. but he hasn't, he hasn't like it still feels like the fall is a band of these people, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, as a band, also a concept, a, yeah. you know, a musical concept with the way more of a collective at that point. Repetitive rhythm section and, yeah. uh, and challenging guitars. Yeah, um, and that was uh, back to the point I was trying to make. So the frightened, kind of melodic, but also super, just um, uh, intriguing. Yep. And then you go to um, uh, Crap Trap, Like to Blow, which is just like, yeah. all of a sudden hits you in the face with the uh, more intense repetition and screaming and what is this guy talking about? Even is this music right. you know, at first until, right. they, until you get used to the hook, Yeah. you know? And then back on to Rebellious Jukebox, which is uh, clearly a single, right? Yeah, that, that, was, that, that was, a pop I think song. that was like an yeah. NME, uh, like uh, on an NME mix. Like, right, you know, right, right. Think you know. up from there, James. All right. Yeah, I or mean, no, no, no Christmas for John Quays, which you always think of as no Christmas for junkies. Uh huh. I which did I always, not think of that, but that I yeah. always think about it like no the song Christmas is about drugs. Because if, if you're a junkie, totally. you don't have Christmas. Huh. Which he junkie. totally uh, flirted with that. And, and I wonder if the whole like sometimes I, I feel you, like, like he's yeah. in, on purpose. He's trying to like. Because you think you're thinking he's going to say no Christmas for junkies. Right. 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 I, I, I think. I think, that. No, I, think I mean, isn't it about John K. the the K, the K brothers? I think so. K. K. Yeah. So, but yeah. Okay. No Christmas for junkies. Wow. I mean, I still love industrial estate. Mm -hmm. I always say estate instead of Cheers, estate. Cheers, Kevin. I'm so glad you're on here, man. Finally. Well, here's, here's, the, here's the other thing. Um, I, I know a band like The Fall, and we talk about the fanatics yeah. and the fans that they have, you know. Um, you, you have to, you know, I'm just, and I just thought about this just now. You have to give someone like John Peel so much props for me. John Peel had his fans, and he pushed. Like, I think the undertones in The Fall were like his favorite band. You know? uh, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is he's, he's, uh, you know, classic John it, Tones. He, um, yes, yeah, so, you know, uh, so John uh, Peel is like this. pushing. Probably like playing Buzzcocks here. Probably push, pushing like anything from that time, like, which is all great jukebox, you know, stuff. And and it's all so different, you know. Some of it's straight up like art punk, and some of it is more poppy. But it was just so much great stuff. But I, well, because I go back and I listen to a lot of John Peel um, mm -hmm. radio shows and yeah. his playlists, whatever. All the stuff he'd play. And yeah. I'm not kidding. 
he probably talks about the fall 20 times a week. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. You know? So, he's like, unbelievable. Yeah, and he, and he had that influence. Yeah. So, some college kids, like, yeah, man, I like what John Fuel likes. Yeah. Is going to, you know. Uh, that's definitely a touchstone, important touchstone. Um, uh, I mean, just for any musician to listen to a band like The Fall, you know, whether you're a drummer and likes this locked in, to find something on these locked in repetitive grooves or, you know, guitar player, it's just like an all out um, non technical, melodic, but also um, uh, creative and um, intricate way to play it sometimes. Yeah. So, there's a spontaneity. I always, I mean, I know. And I've read a few fall books and stuff like that, but I, I know that they're very uh, big fans of like a first take of a song. Oh, yeah. And I think that there's a, a magic to all of that where mm -hmm. it's almost, and there's certain parts in certain songs where you're like, you hear mistakes. They don't know where they're going to the next yeah. part. Like they're, I think but you that's do hear that in Live at the Witch Trials yeah. a lot for early fall. They're very like under rehearsed, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like, almost like, it's it's like pretty, the, pretty slop. it's the universal. sloppy but pretty, you know. It, 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 it works. I, I that that he Marky Smith is like a master of capturing that magic of that, you know. Because after like, you know, when you we've all recorded when, yeah. After like the second, third, fourth take, fifth take, then you start getting in your head. Oh yeah. And then you're like, then you lose all the spontaneity. You're just trying to yeah, execute, true. and I you're did, just I'm, like. I, and it's funny because it I becomes did, a psychological. I was just in with field. Tom Tapping the other day yeah. when you when boy beat cancer, yeah. blood circus. And I was like, listen, I know the first one's going to be the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I, because I, I, I start doubting myself. Like, I mean, there's no way I can That's do always it. been the approach four, with yeah. fall records. And right. I think that that's, that's really inspiring. Musician-wise, they're very inspiring. That's there. exactly it. That's exactly what I was uh, wanting to say. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that kind of keep it loose and just mm -hmm. go with what you, but I mean, it go helps. with your instincts. I, I mean, I wonder how many uh, takes Marky Smith gave himself. You know, what maybe, I do, maybe not, but it does he help. He seemed I was like say, an impatient man, I so see, I don't think he Okay, so maybe he didn't, and still to my point, it helps to have the acerbic wit and genius of Marky Smith's poetry yeah. to throw on top Th of whatever it. noise you're making. Totally. So, um, I do want to say, though, the is the impressive thing. Marky Smith took his, he took himself very seriously, and when you listen to the live records, he is nailing every single line right. of songs. You know, he's, that, yeah. you get this image like, oh, he's just fucking off and like, he's no, just no, gonna no, like there's a, method, there's a method to the madness, yeah. Every word that he sings on those songs is fully formed. Realized, supposed and to be there. Realized, yeah. and when they play live, he is executing every word of every song. Right. Exactly. Yeah. While, I mean, it's, while sounding like a manic crackpot that you yeah. would run away from. If right. You saw so, it's so, pretty so, yeah. amazing. So they played here at the Echo Lounge. And, yeah, and yeah, let's talk our, yeah. our, our false yeah. stories. Echo uh, Lounge. Let's start going into the story. I mean, I have a good one. Is that 99, was it? 98? Uh, the story, um, it's uh, around 90, uh, you know, around the turn of the century, let's say. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the exact year. And there's this place called the Echo Lounge, Atlanta, Georgia, rest East Atlanta. Peace, yeah. Also, rest in peace. Uh, um, Echo Lounge. We saw some great place. Great show. Of us, so why a there? bunch of other people? Um, the fall came to town to play, and I think it might have been my only opportunity to see them since that one teenage aborted attempt. You know, sure, yeah. A UK band, and they because right. they played the. I think that tour that you saw that got aborted, they played at the Masquerade. Oh yeah. And I didn't. They played with uh, Jacko Nuts. Oh, oh wow. wow! And I didn't, I didn't band. know who they were or anything. Yeah. But you I heard think that was later, yeah. that same. I think that was that the same legendary leg. Tour. I think like yeah. Shannon Mulvaney and people. Like, there are people who we know who have, who were there course, at that yeah. show. But you're right. I think the next time they came through was the Echo. It, so it might have been you know, the next time that they came to the stage. Later. But they did have. Oh right, big, till Atlanta. Yeah. Well, were, I don't know. The next time I was able to catch up with them, I'm putting it that way. Sure. So. Yes. So, uh, um, and then you know, because of uh, Marky Smith being notoriously difficult to work through, with and going through, you yeah. know, so many different band members and different things. Seventy-nine band members over, right? over thirty years. Um, yeah. Sure. So, the story of the rumor of what happened is if, um, so you, if you know about Marky Smith, he was also notoriously uh, manic and. Um, you know, just emotional, and um, he'd whip his band into a state. He'd whip his band into a state, every, but also every, every as an unbalanced uh, drug user. 
and yes. drug abuser, right? Yep. Okay, so that's the point I'm trying yeah, to make. We could say anything we want on this show. He, he, Allegedly, he smoked he some pipes. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it fueled, uh, and I, I, it's one of those things that I, I think that it probably did fuel this great art. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, yeah, Marcus is we're not condoning that. it, but yeah. Um, so if you know where the Echo Lounge was in the East Atlanta Village, there's a little side street you go up and uh, to park and load in. Sure. Stokeswood Avenue, right? Yep. And there was a Across natural... feet from the old music place. Uh, Earth shaking, Earth shaking, Earth shaking yeah. music sure. we love. Um, and uh, uh, Stokeswood, there was also across the street from this house that was obviously um, this this pickup spot, right? You know where. You, there were people out on the corner selling, and it was very clear. And so the story was, we were in the Echo Lounge, and I wish I could remember who opened it. Maybe uh, someone in the comments knows who was the opener on that show. Um, but they came, and they loaded in, and then it was taking whoever the opener was. They, they got done with their set, and then it was an hour. Yeah, it was a long time. Remember that? And yes. then it was like an hour and a half. Because I was there, me and Sue, my wife, because uh, I was like, we're going to go see the fall. Yeah. And I do remember everybody was crunched we in like this. We were crunched in, and trying to get to the like, front, right? Just yes, sitting there. Exactly. Like, how long is it going to be? A couple hours she it was. was a, she was a good sport. And I can't remember if the rumor Shout came out, out that yeah. night or we heard it later, but what I heard was that Marky e. Smith saw what was going on across the street while they were loading in. He yeah. wanted in on it. And then the band also saw him see that. Yeah. And the band tried to sequester him in the green room at the Echo Lounge and locked him in here. there. Yep. Locked Marky e. Smith in the green room, is what I heard. Um, and while they, I guess, were out of the room, him locked in there, he escaped through the window yeah. <laughs> to go across the street and, and score some crack. Yep. Okay, and then I think uh, the story was he was at that house for a couple hours, yeah. left his band in the dark about where he was or yep. if he was coming back, then showed up and then took the stage and... He had, do you remember, a, like a broken ankle? Yeah, was he in a wheelchair? Or was he, he in, was a, in a, a cane? Cast he, had a cane. he had a fold out table. Yeah. So he was mostly sitting at this table with like the microphone with a little short stand uh, that he would pick up. It looked very much like a, um, just like a manic Spalding Gray giving like um, his most <laughs> yeah, impassioned totally. storytelling or something. Yeah. Um, and you know he was he was whipped into a frenzy. Uh, I guess we could assume it was the drug fueled frenzy of the crack house across the street. But he eventually got up, stomping around yeah, on, his, yeah. on his cast foot and wrapping no up pain, his band no members no, in the, no in the pain, cord of yeah. his microphone. And, yep. You remember all of that? Yeah. I mean, I, I remember his whole trick of just going up to people's amps and oh, starting yeah. to turn knobs. Yeah, that's just true. Was like how he liked it. Yeah, as a guitar I player. Saw, how I would yeah. Want to, I, I've only seen him and, and David Thomas from Periubu also did yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. And he would and, and take his vocal mic and stick it next to the guitar amp yeah. just to just to change the dynamic of everything going yeah. on, just make it sound crazy right. and yeah. weird. I mean, he was a good te like maestro of sort of like like I said, putting everybody on edge. Yeah, maestro of madness and, too, and just creating something exciting yeah. in the room uh, beyond the limits though usually yeah. as well because you can also search and find uh, live clips of Marky Smith getting in fights physical fist fights with oh, them or yeah. them bad, coming at him bad things happening right, right? yeah no totally. he was definitely uh, what was your did you have any other mix. recollection of that show or was there another one that you saw this and I think it was that one I only saw him that one time at the Echo Lounge uh, but I do remember the I remember them playing for a long time, waiting for an hour, then then right. starting to play some vamp for like 20 minutes or so, mm -hmm. just yeah. is he ever gonna come out? Marky Smith hadn't come out. And then he finally come out. I remember the guitar player playing a Les Paul with a Confederate flag on it, which was yeah. Kind of weird. Like you're, you're like I know He's you're British. Brit, first of all, yeah. Like you're, you're British, so the, the 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 Confederate flag means something to you. I don't think you understand Different. what it means in Atlanta. That was a <laughs> yeah. ballsy it's a no, move. It's a no, no. Yeah, yeah, it ballsy was, and a misstep. But I also get that yeah. was the scene. Also, country teasers who you name checked earlier sure. would do that kind of pro provocative kind of thing. But that, uh, to them, I mean, in in in, in Europe and in the UK and everything. Confederate flag just means like a rebel, like you're being right. rebellious. Right. Yes, it's a rebel flag. It's, yeah. it's, 
So, but, but it's sort of like when you get, it's sort of like having a swastika on your arm, rebellious wise, and going to Germany. It's yeah. it's a weird, it's a weird sight. Yeah. But anyway, going to get some like, glances. But in yeah. the 70s, that was fashion. So it, that, it, it was their sure. take on it in the 90s. He was, but it hasn't aged well. Like, it, it doesn't sit right. right. That's you know a good I mean? point. Yeah, it, it was a funny thing. Like, oh, I do vividly remember that. I remember them playing great. I remember it being... Yeah, you just didn't know what was going to happen. Well, I think they had to do that, and it's it's been done over the years with great front men uh, like uh, James Brown and Mike Marky Smith up there with them. Like, yeah. um, you have these temperamental, insane geniuses yep. that you don't know where their head is at. So you might be yep. playing forty minute instrumentals, and then they finally come out. <laughs> it's like, where's the dude taking the cape off me? You know, see how to be and prepared now, for that. Now I'm going to lose it. You know, yeah. I, mean, I imagine they had. Hundreds of shows well, like that. Where's the dude taking the cape off of me? <laughs> they, we should have had. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know, like, exactly. If he yeah. was in town and we could have done a double episode, but Shannon Mulvaney, Love Shannon. when he was in Magna Pop, they toured with the Fall. Wow. And so he has. Shout out Shannon. He has. Um, and that's Magna amazing. Pop. He has Fall tour, like with Bricks. Oh, we too, got Because it was what? sort of like Journal. when she came back as kind of. Very uh, good, yeah. Yeah, um, like the. Anyway. Brick Smith, female amazing guitar Bricks, player of the fall of the Bricks is, 80s period. The Bricks era is my, so that my was, personal so that era. Was, what is, what is, your, what is your favorite era? Uh, in my band, we Everybody have is. a song called Pretty Bricks. Yes. So that's my favorite era, too. I, yeah. I read her book. Okay. I read The Fallen, the book about all of their ex band that's members. That's the big book that, like, it's all I the old read, members um, except, like, two or three or something. Stephen Hanley's book or whatever, the, book, the bass player. Uh -huh. He supposedly his book is the definitive. Because he was one. one he was the, I want he was to. In, There's a few. I haven't read any fall um, uh, type of biography yet, and I need to. But there he, are several. Well, he's the only one that was on. He was the only one that was on several albums. So I think he was on, the he was one on, who's like has the, the biggest lineage to come. He was to, on like five, six albums. Right. Yeah. yeah, he was on. Uh, a, makes a sense. Lot. That would be the good one. But there, I also read a part of it, but I haven't finished it. But. Sue's my old friend Sarah. She brought when she came visited from Philadelphia. She has the Marky e. Smith screenplay for his horror movie book. Of course. So you can read his. He yeah. wrote a screenplay for a horror movie. I was unaware of that, that but that must be fascinating. You can uh, read his wife put out. So oh, yeah. it's a. Uh, I wonder how well written it would be because we <laughs> admire Marky e. Smith as a, um, uh, a a musical lyricist, but is 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 you know it's poetry. He, That's a really it, good it's, point. It's poetry and it's and, and it's chopped yes. up, frantic. Um, yeah kind of um, proclamation type of stuff. Totally yeah. unique. That, that's a really good point because like a wonderful lyricist, like I said, high intellect. Yeah. Um, and our brains like uh, sponge it up and take it in, you know. Yeah. But um, very spastic and chopped up. Like, like for instance, like Nick Cave, wonderful lyricist, and he's written great books and screenplays. Tom Waits, great lyricist, he's been asked, how come you haven't written a book? He's like, because I wouldn't know how. Right. Like, he knows how to write sure. the poetry part of it. Like, yeah. you know, you, and it's, it's this weird thing, you know. Um, Leonard Cohen could do that, you know, for like, I don't know, Marky's. I, I, so I does wonder, he pull I, it off, I guess? He read it? I've read a little bit. I think he's, he kind of, it's kind of just he has a apart. helper. Like, he has a person, like, sort of wrangling That's his ideas. a lot ideas. of people do when they're doing it. So, yeah, so okay. I think it's, it's his own essence, his own what he wanted to make, and I think they kind of pieced yeah, it together it to make a screenplay for a movie that was never made. So I'm, I'm really uh, intrigued. I will definitely get yeah, it. Yeah, I want to check that out. I want to see that too. It's, it's a it's Man, cool. shout out to um, your girl in Philadelphia. Yeah, she, she Sarah was asking you about Leatherface Records. Sarah. She's like, yeah, like, exactly. get a virus. She's, it's so amazing. And you want to know something? It's a big fall I, I love, I love that. Uh, and by the way, uh, most of my great friends I've met through music, and that that's awesome. Like you know, it's it's the it's the best thing ever. You it's know, a common point. And then you and then to continue inspiring and re-inspiring each other, and even like going back and listening to this record this week because Kevin said this is what we're doing. You know, it's the best. You know. But I I do think, like I said, any anybody wants to get into the fall just. Grab any record they want. I mean, really. The, the, the cover that intrigues but, but the one, the, you. Yeah, look at all the covers. You're attracted to. I, I would that's say okay to that, but also there are periods that people have idea opinions about. Okay? I know, I know. There so are several like periods. They get a little electro. So I usually stayed away from the ones with the triangles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was that always scared so of those, fun. but. Those are also really good too. Like in the end, you kind of can. Uh, and with, there are, distance, like I say, this is challenging, so that would scare a bunch of people off. Yeah. But sure. also, there are uh, fall albums that um, are more um, 
kind of well slickly produced and um, still maintain that more, essence. More, more like uh, but it always sounds like him. It, all the way up to the last album, like their music, not even just him as a vocalist, but the fall music, right? It's right. really a bummer when when he did die because you knew it was the, there was never going to be another album. Mm -hmm. That was the, the much, that's what everybody much. thinks is like. Actually, you know, I was living every in, year. You were getting a new album. I was living in New York at the time and had they were coming to uh, Baby's All Right in Brooklyn. Oh, I love that place. And um, a five night stand. I had tickets to each of the five nights. That's amazing. And then he died. And you were, and you then were they ripped off once it, again. And then he died. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of puts a cap on it. Yeah. Once yeah. again, I didn't get to see that fall. You didn't show. get to see him Luckily, when you wanted to. Echo Lounge. Luckily, you saw I know, at least you could high say, as hell you could at say the Echo Lounge in East Atlanta Village. And it was exciting. <laughs> they played. I remember they played. I am Donald Suzuki. I remember they played, uh -huh. I think they played Mr. Pharmacist. Yeah, Because they yeah, would play yeah. it regularly. All that, and always, I could, I could, but I don't yeah. remember much about it. It's being very packed, like you said. Yeah, just jammed in there and, and just wondering what the hell was going to happen. You're almost like, I'll digest this later. Yeah. I just want to like Yeah, but, 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 but like you're talking about that you thing know? again, it's like, uh, what an iconic, like, weird, weird front person. Like, yeah. on every level, you wouldn't expect this guy to become this, you know, big front person. And it's like, Part of the show, a lot of the fans like it's like Shane McGowan. It's like we don't know what we're going to see. Are we going to see the train wreck? I'm cool with it. I don't care what I'm going to see. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see the show. It's going to yeah. be what it That's is. A good yeah. attitude to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I'm just here to watch the show. Uh, so either way, it's going to be good. Yeah. Well, thanks for the thanks yeah. for bringing the record. I'm glad that you picked the first one. In a way, it's sort of like start here and just move yeah. on from and, there. And listen to some fall oh, records yeah. this week, everybody. Yeah. And rest in peace, Marky Smith. And um, sure. so stoked on just uh, just talking about it with you. Yeah. Great, thanks for having me, you guys. Man, much Thank love. You. Man. Cheers to threes on the ones and twos. Ken and Phil, man, our brother. Cheers, everybody.